Hey guys, welcome back to another twin motion video. I'm excited to bring this one to you because we're going to be talking about importing models and all the different types of models you can bring in and the effects that you have on the different import options. Before we get into it, I do want to say if you learn something at any point in this video, if you would please demolish that like button. It really helps. And also consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. That also really helps. Jumping right into it now, we are looking at the import tab. And there's nothing here by default. And I'm, the scene I'm working with just has a starting ground. And I've added a water material because it looks nice and will play better with the contrast of some of the imports we're bringing in. So we'll leave that there for now. But I'm going to go to import. And immediately we have geometry and landscape to choose from. I'm first going to focus on landscape and we'll get more in depth on the geometry. So looking at the landscape, I've got my file and my different options. Let's hit open and I can see all the different file types that are actually available for me to bring in an import. And I've got just basic text images, an FBX file, really anything can be almost any kind of model can be used as something twin motion would consider to be landscape. Even height maps are nice, specific point files or meshes. A lot of basic modeling programs would pr produce meshes and you can import that as landscape. I've got a, actually a height map here and it's just a basic height map that I found online. But as an example, you could see the effects that a height map has. If you're not familiar with what a height map is, a height map is just a black and white image and it could be any black and white image, but Typically, it's some sort of landscape, but it's a black and white image that all the values between black, complete black and complete white will determine the elevation. So in this case, black, or in the case of height maps, black is flat. In other words, no elevation and white or completely white is maximum elevation. So I'm going to hit open and we actually have the option of choosing what that maximum elevation is. So this amplitude now, I've actually changed my units to inches, so I'm not sure why this is in meters, but it doesn't matter so much. I'm going to put that at 100 meters just so it's not as drastic as crazy, but it'll give us enough so we can see the difference between something that's flat and something with more elevation. And the landscape larger size, this, from what I can tell, is pointing directly to the resolution of the image. In this case, I'm using a 2048 by 2448 image take that uh, with what you will. I'm not, I haven't really experimented with other sizes, so you might play with that. This is, of course, determining the size of the landscape in general. Um, this is fine for what we're doing. It's, it's just gonna end up being an example. I wanna put on smoothing just so it's smooth and not as jaggedy, and I'll hit okay. And as soon as I do that, it's gonna import this terrain and give me my height map. So as we can see here, there's my height map. It's not quite that drastic, but let me select it. And as soon as I do, I can now bring it up out of the water so we can see it a little better. So there's my, my landscape there. It looks pretty good, starting to look good. And you can, of course, you can take this into uh, twin motion now. And the fact that it's here as actual landscape, you can use all your different sculpting tools that you're normally used to using and start to affect the landscape that way. It's really great, very easy to start with some basic height map and end up with something like this. You can sculpt it to however you want and make it look like what you need. So that really is everything that comes with landscape. Again, this works with any type of file that is included in that file types. You can use any type of file that you want and do the same thing that I'm doing right here. You can sculpt all of it because it comes in as basic twin motion geometry and twin motion landscape. So that will be landscapes. I'm going to actually get rid of this landscape. We don't need it right now. I'm going to go back to import and we're going to start working with geometries. Now what I have is a series of floor plans that I'm going to bring in as well as specific objects and we can see how we can bring them in as different import options. So I'm going to hit open and we've got these different floor plans as well as like this locker and I'm going to choose floor plan all. I'm going to hit open and my options here are where things are start getting different collapse. This is going to determine all the options that you have as far as working with the import after you bring it in. And collapse in this case refers to all the elements in the import. 
how you're going to get to use them and how you how you can manipulate them. So the main option is collapse by material. I can also keep the hierarchy or collapse all. So in this case, I'm going to hit collapse all. And of course, I'd, I'd like to fix the UV and texture, but because I'm exporting this as an FBX from Revit, I shouldn't necessarily have any UV problems. That's something you might see out of SketchUp if you have faces that are upside down or backwards, whatever, whatever it is. I like to keep the up axis as Z because that is up and unit conversion, set that to auto, that's fine. Again, I have this set to inches. I'll hit okay. I'm gonna get all my data in here and there is my floor plan. Let's fly over here. You see this a little bit better. All the elements in my floor plan are now in the twin motion model. So let's see how this is set up because of course my model is here and so there's my floor plan dash all and it's an FBX file. And then there's my floor plan that's, that's my object. So the collapse all option is essentially giving me one unit. So this entire thing, this entire floor plan, all the geometry, all the furniture, all the information, everything in here is considered to be one single element. And the way we, the reason we know that is because under my import here, I can see I only have one element and I can hide and show just that single element and everything is essentially one unit. It's one model. Now, the interesting part about this is you might think if this is all one giant model that I can simply move around as one piece, you might think that if I apply a material, it would apply to the entire thing. So let's see what happens. Well, in fact, that's not the case. And so that that's kind of nice. In fact, the materials are slightly different, although I would only end up see myself using the all collapse all option if I want everything to be contained with one object. And just kind of knowing that this is all one object is nice if that's what you want. In this case, I might want to be able to move specific elements, trade out specific elements, get new chairs, new furniture in. That's probably something I'm going to want to do. So I don't want to use that necessarily. So I'm going to keep this here and go back to my imports. And as you can see here, as I import objects, I get I have this running list of all my imports, which is really nice. I'm going to go back to import again. Now I'm going to choose the hierarchy option for this floor plan against the same floor plan. But now I'm going to choose instead of collapse by material or collapse all, I'm going to choose keep hierarchy. I want to keep the hierarchy. I want to keep the elements as they are from the exporter program that they came from. In this case, they're from Revit. I want to fix the UV texture again, just, just because I want to. I'll hit OK, it will bring the imports in, and we're going to get this. We're going to start to see these material conflicts. So this material name, proxy object brick, you're going to see proxy, proxy object with all the imports. It's just kind of the way it is, unfortunately. But for something like this, if you're starting from scratch, I typically want to use my importer material just so I could use the material from which the program or Revit or whatever it came from and start from that and then replace those with twin motion materials as I go. If I use the C material, I'm just I'm going to get either a default material or it's going to somehow replace the materials if you have uh, those mater like certain materials set up in Twin Motion already. I'm just going to use the imported so it's a bit easier and we can replace those as we need to. I'll hit OK. It's going to bring this in, and as soon as this brings that in, I ha you can see here that floor plan hierarchy is there. I'm going to move this over here so there are no longer conflicts, just like that. So now we've got our floor plan. We've got this one all where I select it and I see everything. And with this one, I actually start to see the specific elements. And we can see that here, there's my floor plan hierarchy. And I actually have every single element as its own object, as its own everything. And this is really nice on an organization standpoint and just knowing that you have the ability to affect all these objects if you really need to. That's a great advantage to having this hierarchy. You can actually move this wall if you want. Like I said before, I have no ability of doing that here in this other model because it's one solid object. And again, the materials basically apply the same way. It's going to now take the material. In this case, all of my jip in this case is now this brushed aluminum. Whereas if having a different material here, works just the same as before. And you can see that I'm actually getting them both painted because they are considered to be the, the same material. I'm 
exported this from the same model, so they're both the same material. Let's undo that for now. And finally, I want to go and import this one last time, but as materials, collapse by material. Open, and then I've got my material. I'll hit open, options, and I want to make sure to collapse by material. Again, I'll fix the UVs and hit OK. This will import, and again, I'm going to get the same thing popping up with the material conflict. I want to use the imported material. I'll hit OK. And then finally, I'm going to collapse the hierarchy and the, the all, and we can see now I've got my material. And I'm going to move this over here towards the end so we can see this. But now the organization within this model is set up specifically by the materials I have applied in this project. So in this case, everything that has JIP on it is now selected. Everything that has brick is now selected. This is, this is th I like this way a lot because it is organizing your, your materials for you basically. Whereas the floor plan hierarchy, it's just saying here is absolutely everything in your model. Everything that you have there, it's its own object. You have to deal with it now. Now I will say that the materials, again, we just saw this apply throughout because I, on all these walls, I have the same brick material. Whereas it's, it's just an organization thing. So now instead of having to cycle through every element, like I do in this hierarchy, I can actually see every single material in the project and then start to override these materials with nicer looking twin motion materials. In my mind, a much easier way because I can now see them split up by material. So again, this is really, it's, it's kind of based on preference and what you need to do with the models. Maybe you do need to have the control over every single object like we saw in the hierarchy, or maybe you're you want to do all of that within Revit or some other program and everything that you would import it into InMotion is simply just replacing the material. In my mind, that's kind of easier, but I can see how there is an advantage of having all of these individual elements as their own and having the control over each one like you might want to have. The last thing I'm going to do is look in, at objects. And, th and this works all the same. It doesn't have to be the full model. It could be you know, the tiniest little thing. And so what I'm going to bring in now is just like one locker. So I'm going to hit import, open, and I've got a locker here. Again, how do I want to split this up? Well, I probably don't want to collapse this as all because I have a couple different materials. I can keep the hierarchy, but really it's just, it's a single, it's a single locker. Or I can collapse my material. It doesn't really matter because it's all one element. So I'm going to collapse it by material, fix the UVs, hit OK. Again, same problem. I'll hit all right, there we go. Go to my locker and I'm gonna bring it all the way down here. There's my locker. Let's do zoom into my locker here. We can see my locker. And so now, once I expand this locker, I can see that I have two different materials. That's perfect because I actually do have two different materials and let's confirm that. I've got this brushed aluminum, there's my aluminum there. And then maybe we want to put this matte chrome for the hardware. Maybe let's do the bronze so we can see the, the contrast there. Clearly, I have two materials set on this locker. So let's import this as the hierarchy and see if we actually have the same options. I will import the locker of uh, the other. I have a second locker. And then let's go ahead and import this and keep the hierarchy. Again, I will import the materials. And now when we see the locker there, now it's just that single locker. Now maybe... Like we saw before with the materials, it should work all the same and I should have all the options that I have with replacing the materials because they are actually the materials. But let's find out. I'm gonna go to my materials again. I've got my brushed aluminum. Let's put that there and look at that. It looks nice. It looks just like the other one. So really this is reinforcing the fact that this is purely an organizational standpoint, at least when it comes to materials but that the materials will apply based on what the materials are in the import itself, which I think that's the way it should be, because if you have something applied in the import, it should apply here in Twin Motion, regardless of how you, how you have it organized or collapsed over here after you import it. So really, it's, it's almost what's easier for you. If you know that you have, if the example being this locker, if you know that this locker has multiple materials and you're the one managing the locker, Obviously, it's easier to understand that I'm just bringing in the locker. 
that makes more sense. Whereas if you don't know what the materials are or you don't know what the import is, you're not familiar with it, you didn't build it, you, don't, you didn't apply the materials in the base project before importing into Twin Motion, then I'd probably bring it in with materials. Like it's collapsed through materials so you can see clearly I've got multiple materials. And even as I select these different objects, we can see where those materials are on the specific object. That's really nice and really helpful. So if I had no material applied, then I could, I could still see the difference. Whereas if I have this locker that's, I brought this in just through the basic hierarchy, it's just one locker. So it's only gonna show up as one single locker right there. And what will be highlighted is just the locker, not my separate materials. So again, this is all a preferential thing. It's kind of up to you and how you bring it in, when you use it, how you use it, everything like that. The last thing I want to cover with importing is the fact if I go to my imports, I guess I can see all my different imports here, but I actually have the option of deleting them, relocating if I wanted to move that specific file in my file structure somewhere on my computer, or I actually have the option of reloading, which is really nice because maybe one of these imports changed. So what you could do is do all your work in whatever modeling program you're doing, create your export, import it into Twinmotion, do everything you need to, and if you had to go back and make edits in Revit or whatever modeling program, you can make those edits, rewrite, overwrite the export, and then just simply reload all these, inf all these imports and you're good to go. So to show this that it does work, I'm gonna go back to Revit and I've got my floor plan here. And let's say for example, this wall needed to move and it just moved way out here. All right, that's a simple, that's, that's what happened. I'm gonna export this as FBX once again I'll save it over the floor plan material. And once that happens, I can now go back into Twin Motion and I've got my floor plan material and I can simply hit reload. It's gonna re-import everything. You're not gonna lose anything, but there I can see my wall has now been moved. It's exactly what I want. And it was very simple to do. I did my export from Revit after I made my change and just simply reloaded it in Twin Motion. It's that simple. But that's gonna do it for importing objects into Twin motion. We looked at landscapes and geometries. If you have any questions, leave those in the comment section below. And if you did learn something, please demolish that like button. Also consider changing the phase of that subscribe button to existing. That also really does help me out a lot. I sure hope to see you in the next Twin Motion video. There will be lots more coming out soon. I love this program. It's really nice. It looks really great. It's quite easy to use. Sure hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day and thanks for watching.